The outback, mate. What does it mean to you? To me, mate, and to most Aussies, it means dry, sweeping plains. A harsh, cruel, beautiful place, mate, where real Australians live, who use real Aussie English and live by the sort of moral code the big city Australians wish they could adhere to. A place where jackaroos, bushies and traditional Aborigines live side by side. It's the heart of Australia, mate, and defines what it means to be an Australian. But what's the reality, mate? Is that the real Australia? And are the people who live in the outback the only real Australians? How can it be the real Australia, and they the real Australians, when something like 90% of us live by or near the beach? Bit of a paradox, eh, mate? Anyway, the bottom line, mate, is that most Australians do think of the outback as being the heart of Australia. The outback imagery of stockmen and jackaroos and brumbies and billies and swags and swaggies and billabongs. This has long been a core part of the way we've seen ourselves. It's perhaps for this reason, mate, that Jono, when re-evaluating his life after almost carking it when the Noah's Ark thought his arm was tucker, chose to head to the outback to find some answers. Nah, mate. I mean, discover who I am, as an Aussie. Find out me true character. I'm talking about the outback, mate. I think I'm going to go walk about in the outback till I work out who I am. That way, if I cark it, I'll cark it knowing me dinky die identity. And of course, being a good bloke and a good mate, I couldn't let Jono down. OK, mate. If it's important to you that your fair income cobber goes walkabout with you in the outback, so you're not your Pat Malone drinking with the flies while you discover your dinky die identity in case you cark it as a young bloke, then OK. I won't pike on you, mate. Not in your hour of need. Of course, mate. Walkabout derives from the Aboriginal practice of sometimes wandering off into the bush alone on a spiritual journey. In Aussie English these days, though, if something's gone walkabout, it's just lost. The book's gone walkabout. Anyway, mate, back to the outback. First, a trap for young players. If you're going to go walkabout to the outback to discover your dinky die identity, or for any other reason, then you need to be prepared, mate. You're a good bloke, mate. Oh, well, we're all good blokes, Jono, aren't we, mate? When push comes to shove, we're all good blokes. But being good blokes won't keep us alive and in with the locals out whoop-whoop while I'm walkabout in the outback. So we'd better grab some fair income tucker and gear. I'll pop off and have a squeeze in my kitchen in my bedroom, and you can grab the ute and meet me there. Then we'll be off like a piece of cheese, mate. One thing I didn't mention, mate, is water. You need a ton of it in the outback. And, mate, should your car break down, don't leave it. You might think you can walk 100 k's somewhere in the heat, but you can't. You'll cark it before you've done 20, mate. It happens all the time. So, mate, the outback's so bloody important to the Aussie identity, surely we know exactly where it is, so we can all visit it. Unfortunately, mate, that just isn't the case. Ah, uh, Bruce? Which way is the outback? Oh, truth, mate. I don't bloody know. You know most Australians wouldn't know the outback from a bloody platypus. Yeah, well, mate, we have to go somewhere, don't we? Well, mate, just drive away from the coast for about eight hours and then we'll see how we're going. How will we know when we're there? Mate, you'll know that we're there when you see a sign that says bloody whoop whoop in our drive. In fact, mate, the only thing you are certain to find while searching for the outback is Australian animals. Heaps of them, mate. Every few k's. Oh, isn't that sweet, you say? Well, mate, I don't know about sweet. Rancid, perhaps, and very still. <laughs> what the bloody hell was that? Mate, I think it was a roo. The bugger just jumped out of nowhere. I think it had a joey in it. Oh, watch where you're going, Jono. How's the ute? Has it got roo bars? Nah, mate. I was skinned after I bought the ute. Not a Zack left over. Well, where's the bloody rune now? Dunno, mate. It hopped away. Looked a bit crook, though. Oh, well, mate. I'm sure she's fine. Nothing we can do about it anyway. So let's just keep going. I'm sure Dingo or some other wild beast of the outback will feast on the remains of it carks it. Anyway, mate. Let's say you drive far enough and happen upon what really is the outback. What will you see? Well, mate. You'll see a lot of nothing. 
You heard me, mate. Nothing. Just an incomprehensibly large area of barren land that would kill you in half the day if left to its own devices. Makes you think, doesn't it, mate? How can anyone live there? Well, people do, mate. And, as you would expect, these people have character. The Aussie character, as it turns out, a character that only exists in bits and pieces in the city Aussies. An insight into the Australia and Australians of 150 years ago. That's what you'll find in the outback, mate. And unless you're unlucky, mate, you'll find plenty of blokes dressed like me. All speaking slowly, mind you, using rich Australian English. Those blokes spend their days working the land and their evenings telling lies to their mates at the pub. And attending B&S balls, bachelor and spinster that is, trying to impress the local Sheilas. And the next day mate, well mate, these blokes might be crusty, but circle work with the ute in the local paddock still the order of the day. Of course mate, when city Aussies come across someone dressed like me, they're often, well a bit taken aback at seeing the Aussie stereotype come to life. Strike me pink! What's with the clobber, Brucey? You look as though you're a fair dink of jackaroo. Well, mate, you look like a jillaroo, so I guess we're even. And, mate, if you're really lucky, you might find yourself on the set of Australia's unofficial national anthem, Walsing Matilda. Well, look around you, mate. Here we are. The fair dinkum, dinky die, true blue Aussie outback setting. And don't forget, mate, if you get hungry, you can always try and whip up a traditional Aussie damper, which is a bush bread cooked in the campfire. Most city Aussies would only ever see it in school camps. Oh, no worries, Jono. Just hope the discovery's going to plan. You hungry, mate? There's some damper in my swag if you're after some tucker. Is that your grade 6 damper? Well, yeah. Do you think I would have made damper since? Well, mate, there's no bloody way I'm eating that. Anyway. I've bought all the ingredients. Flour, salt, milk, sugar and butter. Basically, mate, you just mix her all together and whack her in some aluminium foil. No worries, mate. Damper for Tucker tonight. And of course, mate, you can't go camping down under, in the outback or otherwise, without a billy for your tea. Oh, beauty, Jono. Fancy a cuppa? That'd be great, Brucey. I'll just grab the billy out of me swag then. When Australians think of the outback, mate, they also think about Aborigines often living in a traditional or semi-traditional lifestyle. I suspect, mate, that the perception that Aborigines mainly live in the outback has come about because they were quickly chased away from the lush coastal areas after European arrival in 1788. Hence the bulk of Aborigines that remained, at least living in a traditional manner, were in the outback, and a lot of Aussies seem to forget that they ever lived anywhere else. <laughs> Relax, boys. I was just wandering through the area on my way back from Tuap and I heard an absolutely atrocious version of Waltzing Matilda. I had to check it out. Mate, the Aboriginal story in post-European Australia hasn't always been a happy one. But one positive that everyone enjoys is traditional Aboriginal music. And the most famous of all Aboriginal instruments is the didgeridoo. Or didge, as it's known to its mates. No way, mate. Waltzing Matilda isn't my style. I can play the didge, Ridgy Didge, though. Ah, the didgeridoo. That'd make me feel a dinky die Aussie. Have you got it with you? Can I have a go? Of course, as Jono and I found out, the didge takes some time to get used to. Oh, that was bloody fantastic, mate. And I thought I was good with the recorder. Well, mate, we've had 40,000 years to practice. Oh, fair enough, mate. No wonder you're so bloody good at it. Mate, do you play professionally? No, mate. Just for fun with me mates after two-up. During the day, I'm a fiery. Now, mate, while the ancient Aboriginal culture is complex and diverse, sadly, most European Australians don't know much about it at all. Did you say 40,000 years? Well, us white fellas have only been here for just over 200 years. You've been here almost 200 times longer than we have. Too bloody right we have. At least 40,000 years. That's why we know our land, this land, so well. It all started back in the dream time. Mate, white man has no dream time stories. White man has no dream time stories? Bunya, sit down and let me tell you a white man dreaming you can tell your grandkids about.
And that's how Wombat Lager came to be. That's pathetic, Brucey. I'll bloody say, mate, you have no idea about Aboriginal culture, do you? Well, no, Bunya. Only what I read in the papers, now just watching you play the didge. That's about it, mate. Sorry. One aspect of Aboriginal culture that is fairly well known is that relating to bush tucker. Things are tough in the outback. Sometimes it doesn't rain for a decade. You can even die in about half a day under full heat. But mate, the Aborigines had to survive somehow. And they did so by having an intimate knowledge of the land, including how to get bush tucker. Knowledge acquired over a thousand generations, mate. Jono, we were able to survive in the area by eating bush tucker. That is, tucker you can find in the bush, or in the outback as we are. Of course, mate, some white fellas don't know good bush tucker when it's put right in front of them. Sounds bonza, bunya. Can you find us some? Sure, Jono. Look, over in this log you'll probably find a witchetty grub. Cool. Looks horrible. Give it to Brucey. I'm back, boys. Here, Brucey. Jono wanted you to have this tucker. Oh, good on you, Jono. Bunya, you're both top blokes. Ah. Oh. What the bloody hell was that? It was a witchetty grub, Brucey. Oh, pfft. Oh, that's just bloody disgusting. No, that isn't bloody funny, Jono. Anyway, mate, if an Aussie does travel to the outback, do they find any answers? Well, it's different for everyone. But I think it did help, Jono, in the end. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling more dinky die already. Yeah, mate. I've never felt more true blue, fair dinkum, dinky die, ochre. We're just plain dinkum. Having said that, mate, while at one stage all roads may well have led to Rome, these days, at least in Australia, all roads seem to lead to another useful Aussie institution. You know, I think I've learned enough about Aboriginal culture for one day. In fact, I think this whole journey into the outback to discover me dinky die identity has made me think one thing. Oh yeah? What's that, Jono? I want to go to the pub.